out of mobile, but it is a mobile platform being uh, the Switch. Um, Switch obviously was announced as being able to do PinFX as a, uh, a, a launch uh, platform. But then everybody kind of noticed, wait a second, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One were not mentioned, and aren't those more powerful than the Switch? So I'm just wondering, can you elaborate on any of that? Because uh, it seems like a, that's a rather large base that, obviously, PS5s are very difficult to get <laughs> right now, and it seems like you'd be losing out on a lot of uh, uh, customers with that install base. Yeah, a couple of things. Yes, we're targeting next, or what, I mean, they're here now, next gen consoles. Yeah. Because our development base, we're pushing to the highest fidelity. And from there, we, we can scale down. That's just the way that we try to develop here. We're always pushing the limit first, and then we can port out to lower uh, supported platforms um, in terms of just what, what they're capable of. Uh, the reason why we didn't announce PS4 and Xbox One, um, it's simply a bandwidth issue right now. Uh, we're not able to day one launch Pinball FX across PS5 and PS4, Xbox Series X and Xbox One. Um, so, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, do I want to see the game go there? I would. I just don't know when and I, I couldn't fairly promise that day one. So um, it's really a bandwidth issue. Would that, though, also, because I know people are going to then wonder this, is, well, yeah, but if I do any purchasing eventually on a PS4 and then I buy the PS5, am I going to be back to, oh, I have to repurchase for that? Or is that something you're going to have to save for later to be able to uh, communicate? Yeah, I, I really couldn't. I shouldn't open my mouth there. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> but look, I mean, you know, we, we can talk about backwards compatibility and we've done it forever. This is yeah. the first time we had to we had to break. And honestly, it's a it's a decision about technology when it comes down to it. Well, let's change pace and have a think about some of the really popular um, features that were in FX3. And I think one of those is the create your own tournaments feature. Yes. Like it's, it's it's like such a popular feature in FX3. Do you, do you see that returning to pinball FX? Um, and is it going to be different in pinball FX if you can talk to that? Yeah. That is one of the you know most loved features, one of the most used features. We know this. If that is very much staying, uh, hopefully we can enhance it. You know that is one of our baseline things. And you know as we go as platforms progress, it's all about taking the best things that are working and finding out how to make them better. That is a hot ticket yes item. I imagine that you. Awesome. Uh, I mean, obviously you guys have uh, promoted various people's tournaments that. Uh, um, the, the, oh, they, they've like the was it the the I won't say Pian Gang, but I'm not quite sure um, if I'm saying that right. But anyway, that uh, uh, you know they've wound up having to do their own software offsite in order to uh, you know tally up totals to because they want to do long form uh, multi table game you know tournaments. That's one of those things that I'm wondering is that something that Zen is looking at potentially adding is being able to create a larger tournament than just a single game tournament yeah there's a lot of formats we can slice and dice it a number of ways uh, we see how other people are doing it now we've got a lot of ideas on how we you know we can do it and, and innovate there um you know i can't spill too many beans but you know you i i think that we do a good job of enhancing our features in, in our platforms and making sure that there's an like new and innovate like a whole new reason to build a platform and to begin with so, in other words, you've heard what the community is interested yeah, in. Your, we know what they want. Into. Okay. Um, speaking of that, obviously leaderboards have been a... <laughs> they can be a point of contention among a lot of people. And I know that we here have been... This goes back to us with Farsight. We were like, wipe the boards every now and then. And part of that thing for us has been... And I know that it's been said before, with Zen even, that if you guys were to do a code update that made the game more difficult, therefore making the top leaderboard score almost impossible to reach, that you're hesitant to do that. But we see, obviously, you know, Stern, JJP, they're constantly putting out code updates for their latest tables. And uh, if you were in an arcade, the odds of your high score on a pinball machine being wiped over the course of six months is very real. Um, is there any chance that maybe Zen goes into a, hey... 
every this period, the board's going to be wiped. We'll, you know, archive the top 50 scores. You can look it up by, you know, the date and, you know, be happy that way. Or are we going to continue same as same old and worry about whether any code updates that you guys do is going to be contingent on, is it going to piss off the leaderboard people? Yeah. It's a good point. It's very thought provoking. Um, it, you know, goes down, you know, to maintenance sort of a thing and improving in these code updates. Uh, we've not focused on that, you know, really uh, over the last couple of years, but again, adding more team members and having people available to do that sort of a thing uh, will make it, you know, we'll have to prioritize that and make decisions. But I definitely see your point. I agree with it. You know, with that, I think a lot of times we were fearful of doing things because we just don't feel like people get communication. Like they don't, take the time to understand why something happened and then they just rage at you online and create a bunch of negativity. So, you know, there's also that problem is just making sure people understand why and what's going on. Right. Yeah, fair enough. Now, for console owners, there was a bit of good news. Um, and that was the, the console is getting a teen rating. So with a new rating, that could actually mean a change to what you can actually put into um, some of the the Belly Williams games, which did have some issues with content um, of an adult nature. So I'm wondering, is there a chance now with a team rating to think about ways of changing um, family mode content and enabling that for, for console owners moving forward? Yeah, definitely. Um, and yes, Pinball FX is going to be T-rated game. Um, and that is, you know, another kind of freedom, buys us more freedom with our, to do kind of true to nature content um, with what we've had before. We've been criticized about, you know, certain games, like uh, we just couldn't include that content. Probably Williams is the best example. And so we did the censored version. My preference is going to be to leave it. Uh, the, the default is going to be the family safe mode, and then you can change it to the, uh, to the, the, the full content. And that's a conscious decision of, of, of ours here at Zen because we like to make games that we can just give our kids to play. And, yeah. um, you know, the, the world is changing uh, quickly and what's politically correct is, or, you know, okay for a certain group or territory. Games are kind of at the forefront of this. I think we've talked about this maybe before, but um, we're still very sensitive to that. And the last thing we want to do is, you know, and most of the time, you don't realize you're doing it. You have to be so aware of everything uh, you're, you're putting out in the world. So, yeah, um, we'll be able to put, put put games out that have been censored previously in the Williams side. And then as we're bringing in new licenses or there's more content coming, we could push the boundaries a bit on the on the T side. You know, that T rating gives us extra uh, descriptors <laughs> that we can, you know, simulate and, and, have, and have in the game. Yeah, that's fair enough. The, especially because, uh, you know, obviously immediately pops up. You're like, ah, so we can get uh, Jackbot back in and we can maybe get an Elvira table in the future because I was just imagining a censored Elvira would just be plain wrong. Uh, it wouldn't it's be Elvira It's not an Elvira table at no. all. No, um, <laughs> it really isn't. <laughs> um, that, was, that was literally what got me to buy Pro Mode one, when... Farsight was doing it with Pinball Arcade because I was like, I can't stand this version of the audio that is nothing like what I remember this machine being. Um, but mm -hmm. like you said, it's fair enough for, to ship it with family mode and make it that you have to make the conscious effort to turn it on or turn it off. Um, that is at least, it, it's a token step, but it's there all the same that you easily point to. Yeah. Um, let's see if we can definitively put an end to this. And that is... We have a host of tables that uh, throughout the years have dropped off and never returned. Um, whether that be, and I myself, since I wasn't an Xbox owner, I never played Buccaneers or Speed Machine or Agents or those really early, you know, the Rocky and Bullwinkle. I don't even know what those look like because um, I was on PlayStation. Mm. But then, you know, more recently, obviously we lost five tables going from FX2 to FX3. This go round, we're losing... Um, uh, Walking Dead, which understandable since Telltale, good luck getting hold of them since they kind of don't exist. And I imagine Valve wasn't too happy with you guys um, for the portal purposes. <laughs> Didn't even ask them. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. Um, so, is there a chance? 
Is there even any desire on the part of Zen to go back, bring these up, maybe re when I say remaster, rethink them? Uh, you know, obviously, you guys have learned a lot about design of machine of tables since those early days. Um, or do we just need to put a nail on it and say, nope, they're done. We're not seeing those again. I would say the, the first group of tables that you mentioned. Uh, the early like Xbox originals. ones, yeah. Yeah, those really early ones. And then like Rocking Bullwinkle, um, you know, there's a nail in the coffin on those. Okay. Mm. I don't think those are coming back. Um some of the the licensed ones i would love to bring them back we're working on bringing them back um those are still great designs uh do i want south park back on in pinball fx <laughs> of course i do mm. <laughs> and playing for zombies even even street fighter street fighter's great you know and ninja gaiden um well we said street we'll, fighter we'll because i imagine that one up would love to be able to put up a street fighter pinball cabinet <laughs> Well, you know, yeah, John D and I have a lot of history there. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That was and your first license with him, right? It was. Yes. yes. He got the better of us on that one. <laughs> <laughs> first license is always the hardest. You gotta, you, you're just gonna get it. So, um, yeah, there, there is hope. I don't want to like. I've been really bad in the past about being really excited about stuff and hinting too much at it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just will say that we know you want these. We want them. Uh, it is possible. Okay. 